Do you want to know more about how to win in a highest and best offer situation or multiple offer situation? We're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And if it's your first time here, I'm so happy for you. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification next to it. You'll be notified every time I do a video, which is every Wednesday about Hampton Roads and about real estate. And this is part two of a series talking about multiple offer situations or what they also say is highest and best offer situations and how to win in those scenarios. Another thing to do is to not just make a decision based on what the asking price of the house is. So if the house is listed for $300,000 and there are multiple people making offers on the house, often buyers will say, well, I'll just give them asking price and uh, ask them for closing cost assistance. I'll give them what they want. Uh, well, a lot of people think that way. So what happens is you make the same offer to somebody else, then it comes down to other variables that might outkick yours and make yours less attractive. Make an offer that's higher than the sales price and it could be a thousand, could be multiple thousands. So it's also helpful for your agent to tell you what they think the uh, house will appraise for, what it's actually worth because if it's worth maybe 305 instead of 300,000, well, there is some extra wiggle room you can uh, offer in more uh, money for the seller to take and maybe the other people that make offers won't do that. And so you've offered $1,000, $2,000 more than somebody else and you may have gotten yourself the house. Um, now keep in mind, if you offer more than what the house appraises for, uh, that does not mean you're gonna have to buy the house at that amount. So if the house appraises for less than what you offered, then it goes back to negotiation and the seller may have to take a lower amount or uh, you may have to uh, make some concessions as well but the point is that you're not obligated to close but if the situation occurs where you're making an offer that's higher than the sales price and you guys have to then go back later to negotiate again you might not move forward with the process because the seller might not agree to what you're asking and that means that the house goes back in the market and you've wasted like two or three weeks of time and a little bit of money it's not an automatic fail proof way to approach making an offer but it can help especially if you need just a little extra bump to get over the top another way to win in this kind of situation is to offer a little bit more in the asking price go over the asking price but also offer less in closing costs so at that tells the seller it means that if the appraised price is lower than what you offered, which is more than what they expected, then that means that you also are saying that you can pay some of your closing costs. A lot of times sellers are concerned about taking an offer that's higher than what they're asking because if it doesn't appraise and you also ask for them to pay your closing costs, that means that the house drops to what they originally thought or close to it they might think they have to pay your closing costs still. And if they declined another offer that was at that original sales price, but was also needing less closing costs, then they're basically back at square one. They've lost their original buyer and they are now with you who asked for more closing costs. So, so asking for less closing costs with a multiple offer situation tells the seller that you have some money to work with and that you're able to negotiate if the time comes that you have to. It gives them more reason to want to stick it out with you. And when making that specific amount, that dollar amount offer, always ask yourself, at what point am I making an offer that if I don't get the house, I'm okay with it. So people often like to make decisions based on that, that asking price. Well, I don't wanna go over asking price. I don't wanna go into a bidding war. But, but my opinion is it's not as much about the other people, it's not as much about the uh, asking price, it's not, it's not as much about going over asking price and making sure you get, you get the house. It's all about what you feel inside is what you're comfortable with. Because if you knew that if you had to just offer an extra thousand bucks and you got the house you wanted, the really the one the house you wanted, and you didn't do it, Imagine how that feels uh, if the day after you find out that you didn't get the house and you miss it by a thousand bucks. Would you have regretted it? And if you did, if you would have regretted it, then I suggest going up a little bit higher to make sure you get the house. And at least if you didn't get it, you feel good knowing you gave it your best shot. I found that often once people find the house that they love, uh, they want to squeeze as much deal as they can out of the, out of the transaction uh, and forget that if they don't get the house, they don't get the house. They, you can get as much of a deal or try and get as much of a deal as you want to, but if you don't get the house, it doesn't make any difference, you know? So I, I'm all about keeping the main thing the main thing. I love deals. I'm all about finding the best deal, but if you don't get the house, what point is the deal? <laughs> it doesn't exist. Another suggestion I have is to get qualified with a reputable local lender. A lot of out-of-state lenders or lenders that have like 800 
numbers, you know, you call like those big companies, they often don't know the specific processes of local uh, real estate. And they're also good at qualifying you uh, with little information to begin with. So it doesn't mean that these are bad lenders, it just means that their processes are different. And sometimes it's hard to get a hold of somebody in one of these larger companies because they have very strict hours. And so having a local lender you can talk to when you need them, and sometimes people that are available after hours or before hours can be a big difference in communicating to the seller that not only are you serious, but uh, they have confidence knowing that the lender tells them that you're qualified and you are going to close. So get as far into the approval process with a local lender as you can so that when the time comes to make that offer, you can do it quickly and you can show the seller and the seller's agent, who is a big part of this, that you have great qualifications and you have it with somebody that the agent uh, might actually know or might be familiar with. That's a big deal and it gives them confidence knowing that the process can be handled smoothly in the way that it should in the local area and in my case, in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, the Hampton Roads area. This goes with uh, sellers and listing agents. Anytime that there is something that they think could jeopardize the timeliness or the ability for you to close, it will factor into getting your offer accepted. So local lenders are extremely helpful. And regardless of what you offer, offering less in closing costs than what you may have wanted originally can go a long way. Often with buyers in the $250,000, $300,000 price range, buyers will often ask for 3% of the sales price to go towards closing costs. Now, so if you know that, if you're willing to take maybe a 1% off of that, maybe offer 2%, 1.5%, whatever that number is, uh, try and reduce it to as much as you can uh, because that number might be just enough to give the seller motivation to take your offer over multiple others that might have uh, maybe offered more in sales price but weren't willing to drop the closing costs. And so again, it's back to bottom line. If there's a buyer that's offering high sales price, but a lot of closing costs help they need, it's gonna be much better for them to take a little bit lower offer and uh, someone with less needs for closing costs. Two reasons, it means that First of all, their net's higher. They're, they're gonna make more money at the end. And also, it means that their house does not have to appraise as high to make sure it closes, which is another huge deal and gives them confidence that the house will probably close. 